Hey, Knowledge Family. How everybody doing today? Um, I have that uh, update on the little nine-year-old boy named Israel, um, Ezra Blunt. Um, he passed away a couple of days ago. And um, we just want to send our condolences. This is him. And we just want to send our condolences to his family and everybody. I just wanted to do this update on him. He was on his father's back. Um, if y'all remember us talking about that, that his father took him to the... Uh, concert and had him on his shoulders and he passed away a couple of days ago and he fell into the crowd and they stampede on him this is him and his grandfather and, um, hold on, knowledge family. Yeah, this is him and his grandfather. And so, it's just so heartbreaking to know that this nine-year-old little boy went through this. And... Let me let y'all hear the news clip of Lil' Azra Blunt. Um, we have four uh, on the, the tragedy at the Astro World Festival. A nine-year-old boy is now the tenth person to die. Ezra Blunt was being treated at Texas Children's Hospital. He died last night. Yeah, absolutely heartbreaking. And the attorney for the family tells us that that little boy suffered swelling to his brain. He also had injuries to his liver and lungs. And as you mentioned, tragically passed away last night. So his death means now that 10 people have died as part of that Astro World tragedy. Nine-year-old Ezra Blunt is the youngest victim. He'd been in the hospital since the night of the festival. Ezra's family telling KPRC that he was on a ventilator and brain dead. According to the family, Ezra was on his father's shoulders during the show, but was trampled along with his dad when his father collapsed due to the crowd surge. And the little boy, as I mentioned, suffered brain swelling and injuries to his liver and lungs. The family's That's attorney, him with Ben his Paul, father. who has previously filed a lawsuit alleging negligence relating to crowd control, failure to provide proper, proper medical attention, hiring, training, supervision, and retention, which they claim led to little Ezra's death, also released a statement last night saying in part, Quote, Ezra's death is absolutely heartbreaking. We are committed to seeking answers and justice for the Blunt family. But tonight we stand in solidarity with the family in grief and prayer. Now, Houston's Mayor Sylvester Turner also tweeted last night saying in part our city prays for his mom, dad, grandparents, other family members, and classmates at this time. They will need all of our support in the months and years to come. Now, as we have reported, dozens of civil lawsuits have been filed. Now, we just did just check this morning. Records show that 90 lawsuits have been filed as of this morning. Okay, so y'all heard that about Lil Ezra. Um, so once again, our heart goes out to him, and I just wanted to give y'all that update. But um, this is also a message this video is going to be a message, not only that I give the update on Lil Azra, but Azra, Blunt. But I also wanted to send a message out to the um, savages who did this to him. And I also want to give a little of update on this story, okay? So, um, everybody know... And who don't know, you know, we talked about this. I had a part one and a part two um, about the father who had him, 
had little Ezra on his back, right? And he had him on his back. And then his father became crushed to where he couldn't hold on to his son anymore because he fainted. Okay, so when he fainted, then the little nine-year-old fell off, of course, his father, okay, and fell into the crowd. And I, I feel like this, y'all, most likely he probably, when he fell off his father, he probably was trying to wake his father up or he probably was trying to see what was going on with his father because I know by him being nine years old, he know his father had fell down. You know what I'm saying? And um, I can just only imagine because I have grandkids his age, you know, and I can only imagine that they he did was trying to see what was going on with the father. And by that time, he go a bunch of people stomping and kneeing him and stepping on him at that time okay so uh it's just a it's it's, it's just a hard story to cover y'all it, it really is especially when you're talking about a, a nine-year-old child so that makes um number 10 he 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 is the 10th person who has passed away doing this tragedy and they say there's some more people that are still fighting for their lives, okay, in the hospital, so, but my thing is, y'all, you know, it's a lot of people that, I, I don't want people to blame the father, I've been hearing a lot of people blaming the father or whatever, but people don't blame the father, you know, um, not, not right now, but what I can say is, I don't know if people really knew, because I said it in my last video, but I really didn't break it down, that kids loved travis scott now let me tell you i know people say you know um why was kids there or whatever but like we said that's a festival with rides and all that stuff like that okay and travis scott own three-year-old daughter was there and his unborn child who kylie jenner slash the uh, kardashian is carrying so you know um she was there pregnant and she looks like she about five or six months pregnant now you know and she had her three-year-old daughter there at that concert as well they was in the vip though you know what i'm saying so now he even had his his child there his three-year-old daughter there named stormy you know he had her there he had his girlfriend there who was pregnant you know so it was some kids there you know, but the thing about it is that Travis Scott made sure that his three-year-old daughter was safe. And the same, I, you know, I know she had bodyguards and all that stuff around her in the VIP section and all that. And, hey, they should have had that same type of energy of bodyguards in that crowd along with the security and the police officers and everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like I said... If it's safe, if it's safe enough for my child to go, it should be safe enough for everybody's children to go, especially if that is an event that's children friendly. Okay, so if I'm throwing something and it's children friendly and I bring my grandkids along, then I feel it's safe for my grandkids to come. I need to make sure that all kids that's attending this event is just as safe as my grandkids because this is my gig, you know, this is my concert, this is my show, so I'm going to make sure that not only they secure it, but they protect the same type of protection they got, same type of protection that all the other kids should have, you know, so, um, I just wanted to bring, bring that out, you know, because, uh, and, and people, the reason why kids love Travis Scott so much is because they have a, a game that's called Fortnite, Okay, and it's a game. It's a it's a game that people live game that people play and all that stuff. And Fortnite um has a game with Travis concerts in it, you know, and his music is in it. So things like that pull kids. It it, it pulls gravity to kids because kids love stuff like that. Kids play games. That's why they always say 
check out what your kids are playing and looking at and watching on TV and, and looking at on their tablets and tele telephones or phones or cell phones or whatever. Make sure that you know what they're looking at and doing because these kids are you make sure that you know the type of artists or type of music or something like that they're listening to because this right here when you have a fortnight game that draws kids in because kids and teenagers and everybody like that young adults they all play these games okay so travis scott is featured in in that fortnight game you know, where he does concerts and then his music come on and all that stuff. So kids start loving Travis Scott. Travis Scott also, uh, he had McDonald's meals, you know, all over the place. You know, you can get a McDonald's Happy Meal. You can get a Mac, uh, McDonald's Happy Meal for Travis. A Travis Scott, um, just a regular meal or a Travis Scott t-shirt with from mcdonald's a, a travis scott poster from mcdonald's a travis scott um stickers and stuff from mcdonald's so what is mcdonald's kids love mcdonald's so you gotta look at all that that the kids was loving travis scott on little things like that you know and he also um have something with nike where he have uh air force one nike shoes out all different kinds of them, okay? And that draw kids in. So when people say, well, why did the kids go to the concert anyway? Or why did the parent take the kids to the concert anyway? A lot of them were taking their kids there to bond. Or a lot like that father there said, he took his son so him and his son can have a bond moment, a bonding moment. His son like Travis Scott. And so he took his son to that Travis Scott festival and then to the concert. Okay, so I mean, it, it, it's a it's a lot of reason why kids love Travis Scott. Okay, and I'm quite sure there were some parents that didn't know how hectic it was, and this father here, uh, that's of this little nine year old boy, he said they was way in the back. They wasn't even in the middle of the crowd, or in the front of the stage, or anything like that. He said they was way in the back of the crowd, and he still got crushed and fainted you know and then his son got trampled on so i mean th this this whole thing but but anyway there was there was about so that's why travis scott is so popular among children okay because you got the Fortnite game you got mcdonald's you got nikes and it's probably plenty more you know, but anyway, it was about 80,000 people there. I say, I, I mean, you look, I know a crowd when I see one. It was about 80,000 people in there. Now, among them 80,000, there was a bunch of damn savages. I'm finna tell you right now. It was a bunch of savages in that crowd. I don't care what nobody say. They was dancing on top of ambulance while the ambulance is trying to get through and got stuck. They decided to jump up on the ambulance and start dancing and carrying on. You know, while, while the ambulance trying to get to dying people and unconscious people. It was just straight. They was acting straight savage. Then they trampling over unconscious people, knocking over unconscious people, just at people that stuck on the ground and struggling on the ground. They gave not a damn. They were stepping all over them and everything like that. People hollering and screaming for help because I know for a fact, I'm going to tell you, it's just a kid. Everybody been a kid once. You know that if you fall down now like that little nine-year-old boy, somebody had to hear him holler or screaming or crying for help. Somebody did. It was a savage and all them savages that bypassed him. I'm going to tell you right now. And then trampled on him. Uh-uh. Hell to the now. And then you have, this is a message to those savage people that trampled on that child. That nine-year-old baby. I know for a fact somebody had to see him. Somebody gave not a damn. It's a couple, a lot of them. A lot of savages who didn't give not a damn that they were stepping on that boy. And I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry when people say, oh, well, I didn't see him down there. I didn't. Somebody did. Now, you had a good Samaritan, don't know who they was, that got the little boy um you know after being trampled on and then he gave got him medical attention and they rushed him straight to the hospital because he was under the name john doe until 
the father woke up in the medical tent because I guess somebody took him to a medical tent. And that's when he was asking, where's my son? Where's my son? And then that's when they gave, showed him a picture, he said, and that was his son. And, you know, he said it was just heartbroken. And that's when he was able to go to the hospital and see about his son. But my point is the people who stampede on this child, on this baby. I don't care what nobody say. Somebody knew something. And you know, I just find, but first of all, when people, uh, this right here just to the message to those savages, because somebody out there, out of them 80,000 people, knew that that child was on that ground. They knew that they heard a child's cry. They knew that they had trampled on this child. Because I find it very weird that I see no pictures of uh, Azra Blunt in anybody pictures. Y'all can go back and look at that Travis Scott concert. All you seen was cell phone recording and recording. I seen where someone had captured a father holding his son up. Uh, I don't know. It looked like a Mexican guy. I don't know but his nationality, but you did see him having his son up on his shoulders, okay? So I guess they made it out of there, whatever. But it was someone in that crowd that while they were filming Travis Scott, they captured that little boy up on his father, okay? And you can see the people around them that was in the crowd around them. I find it very doggone hard that we can't find no pictures of this little boy and his daddy out there in that concert among the crowd out of all them cell phones that was going around and going around. How come we don't hear or see any pictures of this little nine-year-old boy who was out there? See, I find all this pretty, pretty strange. Did nobody mess around and capture them in a picture nowhere with all them 80,000 phones every doggone well? Because y'all seen it, family. All you got to do is flip on and look at Astro World Travis Scott concert. And when you see all those people, you see phones up. See phones up everywhere. So don't nobody got a clip of this little boy or somebody don't want to give that clip of that little boy because it's going to expose who's around that little boy at the time that little boy fell down. Now, see, all this kind of stuff here is kind of real weird damn to me. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know nobody. You see pictures of people surfing people up out the crowd because they are unconscious or something going on. You see people surfing people out of the crowd. You don't see nobody surfing this little nine-year-old boy out the crowd. You don't see nobody saving this little boy up out that crowd. Now, I know there's some good Samaritans who probably found him that said, nah, I don't want my face shown, nothing like that. But the thing is, we we don't know. We don't know who found him. We don't know who was by him. We don't know who his daddy was standing by. There's no pictures or nothing. And we know the daddy, when he fainted, he I know his phone is gone. So, you know, most likely. But what I'm saying is, did nobody capture, nobody have any type of scene where that little boy was up there on his father. I find that very hard to believe. Uh, they, they got pictures of everybody else but the little black boy. Ain't nobody, ain't no pictures exist nowhere. Okay, well, I, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, y'all can miss me with that. But, but anyway, to the message to these savage, I know good and well that people, if you step on a rock, you can feel it. And you're going to look down. If, if you step on a brick or trip over a brick, you're going to look down when you trip. Think about it. That's just an instance. You look down because you want to know what was that. You look down, right? So if you was, if somebody was laying on the ground and you can have, somebody can lay on the ground and you can stand on their back, you really ain't going to be able to have no type of balance. You're going to fall out. Or you gonna trip or something. If you if you know how people lay down in the middle of the floor and watch TV and you hit the corner or something right quick and you trip over them, you gonna you gonna look down and say, hey, move your feet or whatever. So I find it very hard 
that these people didn't look down to see who they was trampling and stomping on. And people say, oh, well, they were squashed. We were squashed. And we couldn't move. And we couldn't move. And nothing like that. But you know where you standing. You know the ground ain't soft. Because let me tell y'all. They said this thing was held in a parking lot. In a parking lot. Where it's hard cement. And they didn't have nothing over the cement or nothing. They were just on hard ass cement. So you know damn well cement ain't soft. So I don't care if you're, you're, you're tightened up or whatever like that. People know. And you say, oh, Lord, I'm stepping on somebody. Everybody need to get some type of control around them and help each other and get somebody up off that floor. But that show you that a lot of these people, concert goers who was there, had no sympathy for human life. None. None, you know, they had no, no, no sense of sympathy for human life at all, at all, at all. You know, you had people that was there with these type of demon souls and these demonic souls and they had no regard for life and they just gave not one damn. They had this, uh demon energy going on it's a lot of them not all of them because i'm quite sure it's some good it, it was some good people there because those are some people that was trying to save people but you also had these evil demon souls with full of energy that was trampling all over people and gave not one damn it was almost like they it was almost like this concert was like it was a trample of hell is everybody that didn't give a damn like nobody had any kind of soul no type of some some people did but the majority of them did the majority of them did trampled right over this little child nine-year-old child you know and i'm quite sure somebody heard some screams before he went unconscious and they were still trampling over him. come on now come on now Come on now, you know. So who, who, whoever did this, whoever these psycho is that did this, I sure hope they suffer. I sure hope they suffer because let me tell you, or get caught or something. Because let me tell y'all something, and we know they ain't gonna get caught. They gonna say, oh well, it was, it was a mistake. Didn't nobody mean to do it. Da, 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 da. But let me tell you something. It was just too many people that had no regards of life. Period. You know and for the psycho savages that did that. And people say, well, why do you call them psycho? Because psycho means poor judgment, failure to learn from experience, no, no capability of love, lack of remorse or shame. They have a lack of remorse and shame. And then they have no sense of self-worth and they have poor, poor and danger behavior. Yeah, yeah. So, see, there's a lot of people that fall in that category that didn't really think that they did. But if you look at the meaning of psychopath, that is the meaning of it. Some of the meaning of it. So, you know, you, you got to look at that. You know, it's disorderly behavior, disorderly conduct, dangerous risk and habits. You know, the incapability to distinguish right from wrong. Yeah, uh-huh, because everybody know that if you're trampling over somebody, that's wrong as hell. It ain't right. And you're supposed to stop and make the people around you stop. I don't give a damn. We like this. If I'm stepping on somebody, I'm still going to be like, hey, y'all, hold up. It's somebody down here. Move back or move up or something. Something's wrong. We'll start swinging or something on somebody. But somebody need to see about that person on the bottom of them. But uh-uh, uh-uh. It was no guard, no regards for human life around now. A, a, a lot of them didn't. A lot of them didn't. And that's sad. You know, so... My thing is that the human cruelty this crowd had for each other was unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, this event turned out to be human torturing. It really did. It really did. You know, and I'm going to tell y'all like this. Y'all, if somebody send y'all 
an invitation. That's what this is another thing I can't understand. If somebody send y'all an invitation and that invitation looking weird as hell, is y'all gonna go? That's what I can't understand. Let me let me let me show a lot of y'all what I'm talking about, and then we are we're gonna have to talk about this, y'all. Because I'm trying to figure out that if you get an invitation in the mail or if somebody invite, inviting you to a party or to a concert or whatever, and your invitation looks like this right here, what are y'all going to do? If your invitation looks like this, they say, hey, come to the party. You know, come to the party and check this out. November the 5th and 6th. You see it? Right there on the right hand side. If somebody send you an invitation that looks like this, y'all like, y'all, what would y'all do? If somebody send y'all an invitation looking like this, what would y'all do? If somebody gave you a flyer to a concert and it's looking like this, what would y'all do? If somebody say, hey, I want you to come party with me, and here go your invitation. Now, they sending you an invitation to this. They sending you an invitation to this. I, I, if, 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 if somebody send y'all an invitation to this, y'all see how there's kids on this flyer? There's kids on this post for the astro world? Y'all see that? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. And then you see this right here. You see this right here say, see you on the other side. See you on the other side. I'm sorry, y'all kind of blurry. See, see you on the other side. See you on the other side of what? Somebody send you an invitation or you see a concert flyer and it looks like this. You invited. Come on in and party with me. Come on in and party. We're going to get down and do some shing dig around here. Y'all, come on. So, somebody send y'all an invitation like that. Is y'all going? Is y'all going? See this? Travis Scott, see you on the other side. So, y'all get invitations and flyers to something like this. Y'all going. Y'all going. See you on the other side. Mm -mm. Oh, hell no. Nah. You ain't going to see you ain't gonna see me on the other side of nothing. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, somebody, nobody better not even attempt to even send me no invitation like that. They better not even attempt to send me no invitation that looking like that. All those different type of things on the on the invitation. Uh-uh. You ain't finna send me no invitation looking like that. I'm sorry. And, and I, I'm gonna call you and tell you, hey, hey, look here, what is this? I know you ain't talking about some see you on the other side. See you on the other side of what? I see you on the other side of, of my ass when I been over and you kiss it. Because I know like hell I'm not going to nothing like that. Now, uh-uh, uh-uh. You should say that invitation. You shouldn't even send that to me. And if I said supposed to be going to a concert and somebody be like, hey, y'all want to go to the concert, whatever, like, who that? Okay, Travis Scott. Oh, really? Heck, oh, was a couple of his flyers. When you look at it, oh, hell no. Nah. I don't give a damn who on there, who is appearing, who is performing. Uh-uh. I'm not going to that. But I'm just saying, y'all, if y'all, somebody gave y'all an invitation look like that, or somebody, you seen the concert that you wanted to go to and all the flyers look like that. Or the artist who is throwing this event, posting all on their social media pictures like that. Come on now. What would y'all say? What would y'all say, parents? What would y'all say? Would y'all would accept the offer? Or you second guess yourself? Or you say right off the bat, hell no. So we have to do that same thing with kids. You know what I'm saying? Watch 
what they being invited to. Watch what type of concerts and stuff they want to go to because ain't no way in the hell I could have did that. And then it got on that that you, it's time to rage. Do y'all know what rage is? Rage is, the meaning of rage is violent, expressing anger, uncontrollable anger, expressing the anger and the violence. You know what I'm saying? And to feel uncontrollable violence. That's what rage is. So now you see why there were so many people, over about 300 people who got hurt. Because this is what they say. Oh, we rage all the time. Rage, that is the meaning of rage, y'all. That is the meaning of rage. And our kids are participating in this, you know. And the sad part is, this here rage thing, this is a new way of partying. This is a new way that our children and teens and young adults go out here and party. So, there are about 50 million children, teens, and adults who follow Travis Scott. Okay? And they love his idea of raging. They love his concept and his idea to rage. Wow. Wow. What do that say about some of our children, teens, and young adults who are walking these streets? Because they think this is a new way of partying. And they feel like it's okay. They feel like it's okay. You know? And that's, that's the sad part about it. So parents, we got to get on the ball and get on our duties as parenting. You know, we got to tighten this up. You know? Now, for the insurance, you know, um, they said that the industry world are only required to have one million dollars in bod bodily injury insurance. So they only have to have, you know, the standard, you know, the minimum standards for the industry that throws concerts and shows that they only have to have one million dollars in bodily um, injury, you know, insurance. Okay. Then I said, wow, because uh, you need to have more than that, but that's uh, that's the minimum that's required in the industry. Okay. Now they say that um, this company that Travis Scott, they reported allegedly, uh, it's called NRG Park. That's the place that threw this Astro World thing. They said that they had $1 million bodily in injury uh, insurance and $25 million liability insurance, okay? Now, for this event. Now, after all that money is gone, you got some people that are going to have to reach in their pocket, point blank, period. I'm sorry. And then, then you have some, because let me tell you all if that company had $1 million insurance for bodily injury insurance, then they had the $25 million insurance for, for um, liability, okay? That's only $26 million. You got some people out here now that's hitting lawsuits. That one person asking for that. So what about the other 100 and 200 people that's trying to file lawsuits because y'all heard on that news right there it's about 98 so far that has filed lawsuits on this matter okay so 26 million dollars i could guarantee you them 98 people gonna eat up that most likely and so the rest of that money is going to have to come out of somebody's pocket. Rather it be the organizer, the N that uh, NRG place or park or whatever production company, Travis Scott. Everybody going to have to dig in them pockets. But it seems like knowing Travis Scott history, they should have boosted that insurance up more than $1 million for bodily uh, injury insurance. Or $25 million and $25 million of liability. 
the way his track record is, and we talked about that in the last video, he need a hell of a lot more than that. I'm going to tell you right now. And then you got some insurance companies now that will back out of the deal. I'm going to tell you that right now and refuse to pay up. And I'm going to tell you, you got some insurance company that is written in fi fine print. They have it written down that you get ready to claim on that insurance. And then they say, oh, no, we're we not paying up because y'all was negligent. Or the actions, you it could have been avoided if you would have took the proper precautions. Like, now you have the insurance company not saying that they're going to do this at all. I'm just giving different scenarios that could happen. Because like I told y'all, I've been in this type of thing. And, you know, I, I give events and stuff. So I know all them type of in and outs. You got some insurance companies that will bag out, slap off deal. I'm going to tell you. And just like they said, well, they got they had $1 million for this and $25 million for this. That's all they had. That's $26 million. But if that company, insurance company, decide to bag up and then say, uh-uh, that wasn't part of the deal. Yeah, but did you read this fine print that says that if you are negligent, or your actions that you did could have been avoided, then we're not paying up. So you got little stuff like that that could go on. You don't know. Because I know down here on the Gulf Coast, everybody, because of hurricanes, people get flood insurance. Boy, when that when the hurricane tear up stuff down through the Gulf Coast, you got insurance companies that try to bag out some shit in a minute. They are holler, you got flood insurance, you got a good amount of flood insurance, and you get ready to make claim on it, and the first thing they say is, well, now, did you read the fine print? It says that if the flood water comes from the top of the of the house, then it's not covered. It's only for the water that comes from the bottom of your house and rise in. It don't cover the water that when your roof blew off, then the water came straight down like that. I'm telling you, honey, they have some tricks and trades up in them damn closets and stuff around there, them little fine prints and all that. So I'm just saying, have to look out for that kind of stuff, people, because every time people say somebody had insurance, that don't mean the insurance going to go through. It's just like it costs too. You can have a certain type of insurance that you only supposed to be the driver. If you let somebody else drive it and they have an accident, the insurance company say, uh-uh, ain't, we ain't paying for that. It's only supposed to be for you. So you just got all kind of stuff going down now that you don't know what will happen, you know? So I'm going to tell you right now, people, a lot of these people around here, especially a lot of them savages at that concert, and there's a hell of a lot of people walking around here now. Y'all better stop dancing with the damn devil now, I'm telling you, because dancing with that devil will bring brutal results. Woo! Brutal results. I'm telling you. The devil will hold your hand. He'll dance with you all day. He'll spin you around in a circle, dip and flip your ass all around and have a jolly good time with you. And you loving it. And you loving every bit of dancing with the devil. He will have, oh, y'all will have so much fun with the devil. Oh, he'll smoke with you. he smoke with your ass. He'll drug with your ass. He will drink with your ass. He'll sniff that sugar booger with your ass. He'll do all kind of drugs with your ass. Ad. He will commit all kind of crimes with your ass. But when he devil or she devil decide to let your damn hand go, your life is going to be brutal as hell. When that devil decide that he through with you and let your hand go, your lifestyle, your life will be brutal and come crushing down like hell. I'm trying to tell you, you can believe that. You'll have some brutal results. Brutal results. Dancing with that devil. Y'all better leave that devil alone now, him. Y'all better leave him alone now. You better believe that. I'm going to tell you right now. So, now, Travis Scott said that he didn't know the severity of this thing. And we talked about that before. But see, what we didn't do is break down the timeline that I have an update on. And this is what they say, allegedly, how the timeline went. Okay, now, he say... He didn't realize the severity of this. The next day, he did an apology and said the next day after this tragedy happened, uh, he said he didn't know the severity of the situation. Now, this is what they say allegedly his timeline was, okay? Now, at 9 p.m., Travis Scott hit the stage, okay? Now, he did his show. At 9.30, 
officials first received reports of people falling, injured in the crowd. Okay? That was at 9.30. Then at 9.38, they declared a massive casualty event on that situation. So at 9.38, they declared a, a mass casualty going on. They declared that at 9.38, okay? Now, at around 10.10 10 or 10.15, Travis stops. Travis Scott stopped performing. Okay? So now, the event was over with. That was it. So now, it was 30 minutes, the last 30 minutes of Travis Scott being on stage, they had declared a mass casualty for that event. And so his last 30 minutes was already declared a mass casualty, okay, and, okay, so when he left the stage, you mean to tell me no one told Travis after he left the stage and went back there to his dressing room or wherever and got all his bags and gathered up and the leave, nobody told Travis that it, that concert was declared a mass casualty 30 minutes before he got off stage. Nobody told him. I find that very hard to believe. Could be true. Could be true. That didn't nobody tell him. But I tell you right now, he need to fire an eight or six everybody on his goddamn team if that's what happened, if they didn't tell him. Because I find it hard to believe that. You know, then Travis Scott went to an after party at Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's is a video uh, game room, like where they, they serve drinks and you can eat. And big old game room upstairs, downstairs, all that. I done been in there a couple of times and stuff with, with my kids. And I've been in there a couple of times just go in there. But that's what it is. So you mean to tell me, you know, if you went to that after party, he was there for about another hour or two. And by that time, it was all over the news and all over the internet what was going on that same night. So you mean to tell me once again, nobody on his crew or his team called him and alerted him that, hey, that event was uh, declared a mass casualty. Nobody told him that. Like I said, I, I find that very hard to believe. But... If so, if, if that's the truth, then like I said, once again, you need to fire an 86 everybody on that damn team. Because, see, your team, his team's supposed to be trying to save his image. Okay? That's what they're supposed to be trying to do. They're supposed to be trying to save his image and save his reputation. And by not informing him something like this, they didn't do nothing but damn near destroy it. And, that, and that's when I said everybody need to be fired. That, if it was me, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? But they say that he said that he didn't know until the next day. I just find that very hard to believe. I really do. I really do. Because they post a, his team posted quickly informed him about everything and protect him and save his energy, uh, uh, his uh, image, regardless. Regardless, y'all. You know, and stop blaming this pandemic for everybody acting trifling and having trifling behavior and stuff. Every, you hear a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, they were acting like this because the pandemic had people locked down and all that stuff. Stop putting all that stuff on the pandemic because what they should have been doing during this pandemic is learning how to cope with other people, learning how to give self-control, learning how to give self-respect, learning how to give respect to other people. See, during this pandemic, it was supposed to have been a teachable and learning time. Everybody's supposed to have took that time that everybody was locked down to try to make to better yourself. That's what people should have been doing during the pandemic, trying to find a way to better yourself, better your future, Make a successful future. Think about how you could become a better 
better person. That's what people should have been doing during the pandemic, picking up a book, learning a lot more, learning a whole lot of more intelligent things, or learning how to open your own business, or learning little things like that. See, that's what you should have been doing, but a lot of people during that pandemic, that whole year, they weren't doing nothing but eating shit and falling and pooping around the damn house, and one taking that time for something valuable. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So then when they get out there, then people going to want the people saying, oh, you know, because people are locked down, that's why they acting trifling. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're supposed to use that time for something better, which is yourself, to better yourself. And a lot of people didn't do that. That's all it was. They were, they were trifling before the pandemic. They were trifling before the pandemic and trifling after the pandemic but we won't try to put it on the pandemic because they trifling oh hell no nah. they was trifling eight years ago they were trifling four years ago they was trifling two years ago uh, stop putting all that shit on that damn pandemic i'm so tired of people doing that i am so tired of people and then you got these folks here that throw this bootlegged ass concert and no one trying to pin it pinch and shit and then didn't to give enough uh money out for the security, didn't secure the whole thing. They were just penny pinching around now. How in the hell you gonna be a major star and shit and then you bootlegging on your concert and shit, trying to cut corners and all that damn shit, saving pennies and penny pinching and shit like a old school grandmama or some shit. Like y'all ain't got y'all putting money together to buy a pack of cigarettes. No, this ain't that type of thing. You can't be piecing no money together to throw no damn concert. You supposed to have that shit, invest in it, and do what's right. I'm so tired of people penny pinching off of people's lives. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Bootleg concert. That's all it was. It was a bootleg concert. It was a gourmet garbage. Gourmet garbage concert. That's all it was. Let's keep it a bean. That's all it was. Penny pinching. Who in the hell penny pinch at a goddamn concert, especially when you got children and teenagers there? Uh-uh. And then you got, and then when you get them in there, you... You demanding all these people to jump up and down like possessed kangaroos. Everybody jumping, everybody jumping around like they possessed kangaroos around now. Do this, do that, and they all doing it. Come on now. Come on now. That don't make no sense. Then they around there drinking all that hokey pokey drink and smoking on that hokey pokey weed and smoking on that hokey pokey powder and all that drinking on the hokey pokey. And then you got the whole hokey pokey atmosphere and shit. Uh, Y'all, now I'm telling you now, you better sit down now and reevaluate what you're doing and who you like. All that, you know, don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. And people, y'all are the famous people. Because let me tell you, people out here, y'all are the famous people. Because guess what? Y'all make the celebrities. See, if it wasn't for y'all, the celebrities couldn't be what they are. If it's not for y'all. See, the celebrities need the people to live their lifestyle. And to continue to live their lifestyle. So see, they just celebrities. They not really the famous ones. The famous ones is y'all. Because y'all are able to control who make it and who don't make it. See, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all right now. You need to start using your inner famous. And decide who deserve your money in their pocket. Who you are spending money on to promote their lifestyle? Who you spending money on to support their lifestyle? You need to focus on, y'all are the famous ones. These people out here, regular people out here walking the streets that buy and downstream and buy music and go to movies and buy movie tickets and all that. Y'all are really the famous ones. Because without y'all, it wouldn't be no famous ones or celebrities. So y'all famous number ones. And they famous number twos. So you need to watch where your hard-earned money is going to. Because I'm going to tell you right now, these, these, uh, these rappers and these stars, some of them now, not all of them, 
They tell your kids to go out here, shoot people, stab people, start a riot, start conflict, destroy their lives, go shoot this, go shoot that, acting bad and jumping out of cars and shooting and all this type of stuff. See, people are, y'all got to stop following what celebrities say do. Because, see, if you look at it, it's a lot of this criminal stuff going on throughout the United States. Because of a lot of them are listening to what celebrities are saying. Some celebrities are saying. Or what's in some of this music. Uh-huh. 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 Be a famous thinker. That's what you do. Be a famous thinker. Yeah. Yeah. Think for yourself on who you support and who you who lifestyle you support. What where your money is you gonna give your money? To this type of person or that type of person? Are you going to give your money to someone who gives not a damn about you or your kids? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you right now. I just find they, they got these, these some celebrities and some rapper artists and stuff like that. They got, the, they got these kids stomping over people, trampling over people, killing people, robbing people, all that stuff. All that stuff, just that, just destroying their lives, while they are in a two million dollar home, twenty million dollar home, forty million dollar home, sixty million dollar home, and after they tell your kid to do all that, they go right back to these mansions and leave your kid strung out there to fend for themselves. Come on now, we got to wake up. And then one more thing is. These kids are doing all this. And then when you look at some of them, they enjoy the look of death on other people. That's sad. That's sad. That's that psychopath stuff I was talking about earlier. And one more thing. Then you got the Houston Police Department that said that, you know, it's not their job to stop the concert and all that. But then I did some research and I looked in 2019 at an Astro, the 2019 Astro World concert that went on then, 2019, that show went over five minutes and they pulled the damn plug. They stopped it and pulled the damn plug on that shit, shut it off, shut it down, everything. And and it they went over that con that concert went over five minutes its time, and going over five minutes they shut that thing down. So you mean to tell me they couldn't shut it down this time? See, I, I mean, it's, it, it, it's a whole lot of people. They see now everybody trying to shift the blame to this one, to that one, to that one, to that one. It's a whole lot of blame to go around. whole lot of blame. A whole lot of blame to go around. And then you got where they done said now that Drake was at a strip club um, the day after the event. Uh, two days after the event, he was at the strip club, and they said he throw a million dollars or something. I don't know if that's true or not. But if it is true, I'm going to tell you, some of these people need to fire their goddamn team. They need to fire their PR. They need to fire all that. Because, see, they got Drake named in some of this lawsuit. And the last thing Drake should have did was went to a strip club and, and to an exotic dad and throw million dollars to exotic dancers or strip dancers i'm telling you now y'all can go look at that video i ain't playing that video but it, it is a lot of money they say first story second story just full of cash it is a lot now i don't know if it's a whole million or not but it's close to it but that's the last thing he need so you got to lay low on stuff like that when they got you named in a lawsuit and stuff that's the last thing you be doing is going out throwing a million dollars to strippers and exotic dancers when you could have bought a million dollars worth of flowers for some of these frivolous and stuff. See, I don't know who these people, PR people is and management team and all that. I'm going to tell you right now, they need to fire them and 86 them and start over because a lot of these people just with them to just grab their money. They damn sure don't give a damn about them because if they did, that wouldn't have happened. I can tell you right now, because if I was some of their PR team, that no, that shit wouldn't have happened at all. You ain't finna go to no strip club and all that. Now, I know you're grown, but hey, you pay me to keep you safe and keep your reputation safe. And that right there ain't saving nothing. 
I can tell you that right now. And y'all stop with all these fake ass apologies. Every time something happens, you got to start coming out talking about, oh, we so sorry. And our condolences come with. That should go in. You know what? That's what people do just to look like they care and don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? They come out. Y'all need to stop all these fake ass apologies. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that some of these apologies, you can tell when they sincere because people will really try to do and try to, you know, make it right. They will try to make it right. Along with that apology, they will do things to try to make this thing right. They will step out and try to make this thing right. They will do all that. But you just got some people that think that as long as they get on a post, as long as they say, oh, you know, my deepest condolence, I, my heart is with the family. You need anything, let me know. I'll be right there for you. And then that's it. But then the family don't see them. They don't get no flowers. They don't get no card. They don't get no signature. They don't get uh, a million dollars sent to their house. They don't do none of that. See, y'all stop with all that fake ass apology because, hey, look here. You can tell when the things are fake because you're not showing the sincerity of the apology. So if you're not going to step up and show physically that you are sorry. Don't come writing them punk ass, fake ass, damn apology. Because don't nobody want to hear. That's all I got to say about that. Gain knowledge to prevent blockage. And we all know what that means. The more you know, the harder it is for anybody to block y'all from y'all goals and success. Bye-bye.